Cheat Code, Support Strategist, by Clouds, Man in the Clouds Not Coming Down, on AO3. Chapter 67, Finals. Hitoshi was ready to punch something, but he was pretty sure that that was a normal reaction to three solid days of brutal academic testing that was probably the main reason why the physical exams were on the very last day. So let off some steam before heading off to the summer break. The fact that they were punching the teachers, though, was an interesting twist. He almost felt bad for Ochako, having to fight All Might, but it only made sense for the two one-for-one -one holders to be paired up, since that's the way the students would even stand a chance, but it would still be interesting to see how Mina would hold up during the fight. He glanced over to Kaminari, who had seemed almost relieved when it was announced that they'd be paired up together, which was weird because it had also been announced that they were fighting Nezu. And Kaminari was always going on about how intelligent wasn't his strong suit. The only reason Hitoshi could ever think of his reaction was that he had someone in the class that he was trying to avoid or really didn't want to get paired up with for whatever reason. But that also didn't make any sense because Kaminari was the definition of social butterfly. There wasn't anyone he didn't like. Maybe he could brainwash him and get the tea, but that was a boundary he really shouldn't cross anyways. He could always just ask him and see if he'd answer voluntarily, but that was awkward and Hitoshi would rather die of curiosity than awkwardness, thanks. I honestly thought they'd pinned you against Aizawa. Kaminari laughed awkwardly, shooting a nervous glance up towards the front of the bus where Nezi was sitting. You've got, like, those similar scarf things and eye bags and stuff. They probably want to avoid any nepotism charges. Hitoshi grumbled. Kaminari's eyes widened. What? Don't worry about it, Hitoshi said quickly. Now, do you have any strategies in mind for how to fight a rat smarter than most humans? Kaminari went pal. Uh, mostly just don't die? Hitoshi rolled his eyes. That's a start, but I think we should get something with a little more oomph. Well, Miyamo, I hope you're as fast as you look. Ayamama said, his mouth somehow sparkling as he spoke. I would imagine it takes quite a bit of speed to outrun a black hole. I'm not going to outrun 13 Squirk, Tenya said tensely. That would require going faster than the speed of light. I would only be outrunning the time reaction. Light will be absorbed as well? Yarmama looked nauseous. Oh my. You didn't, Tenya scowled. How were you planning on fighting them? My naval laser is simply too marvelous, Yarmama said. It doesn't usually require any planning. Everything requires planning, Tenya said incredulously. You can't just wing it. They both tense, as an automated recorder of Nezu's voice played out over the testing area. All combines are in position for their final exam. Begin. Tenya fell into a fighting stance and stared straight ahead. When 13 comes, we need to be ready. His eyes widened as he felt himself being pulled backwards. He looked over towards Ayomama in panic and saw that he had already grabbed onto the nearest railing and prevented himself from being sucked in by Thirteen's quirk. Tenya quickly digged his heels in and followed suit, yelling at Thirteen over his shoulders. Coming from us from behind, that is disgraceful. You are a hero. Villains aren't going to fight fair, kids. Thirteen sounded almost amused. So what are you going to do about it? We need to come up with a plan of attack, Shota began. Aizawa has practically maxed out his stealth stats, so he'll most likely to open with a sneak attack. Yariozu blinked in confusion for a moment before nodding. So, what's the plan? Not sure, Shota frowned. My first instinct is to run, but it'll be a lot easier to win if the whole party is on the same page. So, how about you tell me what you think we should do, and then we could go from there. Sound like a plan? Uh, sure. Yariozu looked surprised. I actually did come up with a strategy that might work if you think we could, maybe. Let's hear it. Shota nodded, 
decisively. We've got a boss to beat. So, like, you can teleport us to All Might and we could attack him before he has a chance to fight back, right? Mina asked. Or does your quirk not really work like that? I mean, it does, technically, Ochako said. But I'd really rather leave that as a last resort. Why? Mina pouted. Wouldn't it give us an advantage? I want to teleport. Ochako groaned. My quirk isn't like Karagiri's. Mina, I'm used to the G-force it takes to teleport and everything, but anyone that tags along isn't, and there isn't anything my quirk can do to protect you from them. When Itoshi and I tried it the other day, just one jump wiped him out for a full five minutes, and then it was a couple hours before he was up to a hundred percent again. So yeah, no, it's not really the best option if you want to, you know, Fight. Oh. Mina slowly got a mischievous look on her face as an idea occurred to her. We could, I mean, we probably shouldn't, but we could. What? Ochoko demanded. Come on, Mina, spit it out. Well, I was just thinking, if whoever you teleport is going to be practically useless, Mina defended. Then what if you don't teleport me. Oh, Ochako's eyes widened, and she couldn't hold back a smile. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, this is pointless, Hitoshi huffed. Nezu's turned this place into a maze, and it's only making it worse by knocking down walls left and right. If we keep going like we have been, we're never gonna find a way out before time's up. Well then, how do you suppose to do it? Head straight for Nezu? Kaminari asked. We don't even know where he is. Hmm. Hitoshi thought for a minute. Well, right now, we're at a disadvantage. He can see us, but we can't see him. Hitoshi grabbed his capture scarf and used it to yank down the nearest camera. Let's change that. Got it. Kaminari grinned and stared, sparkling as he... Grab the wires where the camera had been. One blackout coming right up. Tenya greeted his teeth. We're not getting anywhere. I can try this. Ayama shot his neighbor laser at 13 and predictably it disappeared into the quirk under a second. Well, that did not work. I told you it wouldn't, Tenya growled. Black holes are strong enough to absorb light. They couldn't run, they couldn't fight, they couldn't even let go of these stupid railings. What was he supposed to do when nothing worked right? All the rules he thought were supposed to apply here were thrown out the window. Get creative. Tenya gasped softly as it clicked. This was what Tensei and Artis had been trying so hard to hammer in his head. When everything felt wrong, he had to go with the flow and think outside the box. Otherwise, he'd be paralyzed. Direct attacks on 13 were useless. They simply turned everything to dust. But that didn't limit themselves from the rig rules of a one-on-one -on -one fight. Ayama quickly, Tena yelled. Aim for the ceiling. Let's bring the roof down on top of them. Ayamama's eyes brightened with excitement. Oui, monsieur. Tenya watched Thirteen with rapid attention as Ayomama adjusted his aim and fired. He just needed to wait until just the right moment. That's not gonna work, kids, Thirteen called out, using the other hand to suck up the debris from the floor and keeping one hand pointed towards the kids. You're gonna have to do a lot better than that. Tenya almost smiled as he let go of the railings. He knew they'd take care of the debris. But that also made the mistake of looking up. As soon as Thirteen saw him flying towards them, they deactivated their quirk. But with all the focus on the floor roof falling, there wasn't any time to stop him and Tenya using the full momentum of Black Hole to help him prepare a devastating kick that knocked Thirteen halfway across the room. Tenya crouched to the lower of the center gravity, but he didn't stop moving. Instead. He let his rotor blades do all the work and used the speed he already had to curve around and grab Ayomama. 
spining him onto his back as they rocketed towards the exit. It didn't take long for Ayamama to recover from the surprise. Ah, so we're making a run for it after all. I guess so, Tenya panted. Ayamama started squirming. Let me face backwards. I shall use my sparkle to dazzle all those who try to follow. Tenya nodded and focused on staying steady as Ayamama held on tight and maneuvered himself so they were back to back with their elbows linked. It was like they had become their own battleship and Ayamama was the least as he shot his laser in a short burst behind them. There were crashes at anything that they hit with the laser to the floor and created obstacles for 13, but the unexpected result was that every time Ayamama shot his laser, it gave Tenya a boost of speed as the two of them were a literal rocket. The roller blades got rid of any friction, so all the energy of Ayamama's laser was converted almost directly into pure speed, and the two of them practically flew down the halls and through the exit gate. It took a full 30 seconds or so for them to actually slow down enough to stop, and they were still speeding away when they heard the recording. Tenya Ida and Yagi Ayumama have passed the final exam. Okay, so I'm going to take the high ground and try to figure out where Nezu is while you sneak on him through the tunnels, right? Hitoshi nodded. They didn't give us calm, but uh, dang it. What can we use to communicate? Well, uh, I have this. Denki pulled out a laser through his pocket. Hitoshi blinked. Do I even want to know? Denki shrugged sheepishly. It was on President Mike's desk one time, and I thought it was cool, so I was playing with it, but then he came back into the room, and I didn't want to get in trouble, so I shoved it in my pocket. And I meant to return it after class, but then I forgot I had it, and now it's been too long to return it. Hitoshi just stared at him. Mike never really used pointer lasers while he was teaching, so he probably brought it for the cats and then assumed he lost it. Apparently, Kaminari took his silence as a sign to keep rambling. I was thinking that even if Nezu stopped knocking down buildings when I took out the power, there was still a lot of smoke and stuff in the air, so if I shine the laser where I see him, you'd be able to see where it was pointing. I'm sorry, that probably really stupid. No, Hitoshi grinned. It's just crazy enough it might actually work. Ochako hurtled on a nearby roof as she watched Mina taunt All Might just like they agreed. She might be going up against the number one hero, but she looked like she was having the time of her laugh. Hey, All Might! Mina laughed, waving as she skated around on her acid. Are you ready to go down? All Might gave a booming laugh. Oh, young Ashida, did you come to fight me alone? Where's young Udaraka? Oh, you know, here and there. Mina skated around him. She tends to just pop up whenever I need her, like, now. Ochako took a deep breath and called on All for One, focusing all on All Might as her anchor point. She just needed to focus on where he was and appear, right behind him. She smiled as the world spun and landed less than a foot behind All Might. Bingo. She grabbed onto his cape, and he immediately whirled around, but she hung tighter even as she ripped through the air. It took some concentration to focus on Mina's gravity, but just as All Might jumped to try and body slam her, she latched on and disappeared. When they reappeared, All Might immediately collapsed in a puff of steam, and Ochako panicked when she realized that Mina was already running towards them, and she didn't know about All Might's small form. Ochako cursed under her breath. Of course, All Might's body wouldn't be able to handle the jump without reverting. Why hadn't she thought of that? But if she could teleport close to All Might, then she could jump far from Mina. At least, now that she wasn't focusing all her energy on hanging on to All Might's cape for dear life. In a blink of an eye, the two of them were two streets away, and Ochako snapped the cups around All Might's wrist as soon as she could, and then the exam would officially end, and the medbots could enter the city. She didn't even pay attention to the recording that announced their victory as she hurried to help All Might. He was already kneeling on the ground, so she just rubbed his back as he threw up. 
I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Um, I'll get back to you on that. Oh my, wheeze. But I'm proud. I, I, I didn't not expect you to beat me so easily. Ochako chuckled awkwardly. Uh, it was actually Mina's idea. Well, I guess Shindig should get some credit too, since he was the one who discovered the, um, unfortunate side effects of riding along with me. Sorry. It's- All Might took a deep breath. It's all right. Now, go and celebrate your victory, young lady. You deserve it. Ochako hesitantly stood. She hated to leave him like this, but the med bots should be picking him up soon, and she needs to intercept Mina before she saw All Might's small form. After a moment, she nodded and warped, falling into step with Mina as she skated down one of the fake streets. Hey! Mina skipped to a stop. Why'd you disappear again? I was gonna go help you cuff him. He wasn't completely disabilitated after one warp, and I wanted to be completely sure. Ochako lied. He's the number one hero. He's going to be strong. I guess. Mina pouted. But we won. We passed. Summer camp, here I come. Ochako grinned. Yep. What are you most excited for? Mm, probably swimming, Mina said. What about you? Are you excited to see a certain purple-haired boy in a swimsuit? What? Ochako blushed and covered her face with her hands. Mina, why would you say something like that? I knew it. Mina grabbed her hands away triumphantly. I knew that's why you got so flustered when, you, when he met your parents. You're crushing on him hardcore, aren't you? N no Ochako stuttered. Keep your voice down. Oh, come on. He's at his own exam. He's not going to hear. Mina rolled her eyes. Forget swimming. There's a more important goal this summer. Get this ship to sail. Mina. Ochako whined as Mina started giggling. Mina, no. Hitoshi followed the red lines of light through the smoke until he found where Nezu was hiding. He grinned and adjusted his support item so he could mimic Kirishima's voice. Whoa, Shinso, I found him. Think we could win? Ah, young Shinso. Brilliant use of teamwork and your support items. Nezu smiled and looked around the room. But in case you've forgotten, I did read your file before you started hiding your activation requirements. So I'm afraid I won't be answering any questions from you or Kaminari today. Hitoshi sighed and stepped out of the shadows. I guess we have to do this the hard way then. Nezu smiled. I suppose so. Hitoshi lowered into a fighting stance and glanced out the window. The laser pointer was still shining, but the trajectory kept changing like Kaminari was moving towards them. Good. That meant that even if he couldn't be Nezu on his own, then he could stall until his partner arrived. He tore his eyes away from the window and focused all his attention on Nezu, who was standing there smiling at him like he didn't have a care in the world. Hitoshi felt a shiver run down his spine. He didn't know a whole lot about Nezu and his fighting style, but if his brain was anything like Izuku's, he was in for a rough fight. Hitoshi's first move was to attack with his captured weapon, but Nezu dodged underneath it and rushed towards him before his attack even reached the target. Nezu leapt towards him and Hitoshi managed to force him back with a kick at the very last second, but by the time he regained his balance, Nezu was already launching another attack. It seemed like every time he blocked or dodged an attack, there was another just waiting. It was like a game of cat and mouse, but this time, the cat was literally a mouse. Hitoshi tried once or twice to switch to offense, but Nezu forced him back onto defense every single time. Frankly though, Hitoshi felt a twinge of electricity in the air. Nezu noticed it too and turned towards the doorway giving Hitoshi the opening he needed to finally, finally, wrap his capture weapon around Nezu's waist. He yanked the entire contraption off his neck and threw it towards the doorway right as Kaminari appeared. Kaminari, do your thing. What? Kaminari fumbled the scarf for a moment before finally grabbing it to a bear hug. Oh, right, this thing has a bunch of metal in it. Nezu was almost completely untangled by the time Kaminari was able to send an electric shock down the length of the scarf, but not quite. He went rigged as the scarf turned into a taser, and moments later, Hitoshi was running 
forward to slam cuffs around his wrist. Kaminari Denking and Itoshi Shinso have passed the final exam. Shoto Todoroki and Momu Yarozu have passed the final exam. Shoto was honestly impressed. He'd expected Todoroki to steamroll Yarozu and not listen to her input, but apparently he had been working on his teamwork skills when no one was looking. They planned put together using both their quirks well and played their strengths, which showed a lot of potential. There was still room for improvement, obviously, but they were still teenagers. We did it, Todoroki. Yarozu smiled. We beat Aizawa. Todoroki nodded. Poggers. Dinky glanced over at Shinso as they picked their way out of the maze of destruction that Nezu had created for them. At first, he'd just been grateful that he hadn't gotten paired with Todoroki because he really didn't think that he'd be able to keep his cool for the whole exercise and not let him know about his classmate's super secret stream hobby. Or more accurate, the murderous gaming partner that came with it. He was still kind of panicking over what he was supposed to tell. Like, what if Todoroki actually was working with the villains? And then the teachers found out and somehow realized that Dinky had known the whole time and and thought he was helping them. But what if Todoroki wasn't giving out any information and the teachers found out that he's homeless and made him go back with his dad, who was obviously not the greatest, if Todoroki would rather live on the streets than apologize to him. If that happened, Denki would feel terrible for ruining Todoroki's life, because he had at least seemed a bit fairly happy doing what he was doing, which was streaming video games with a villain who had tried to kill them. Perfectly normal. Sometimes Denki just wished that Aizawa or someone would find the stream on their own so that they could figure out what they wanted to do about it, and Dinky wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. It was kind of a stupid thing to hope for, because teachers were normally pretty lame, so what teacher was going to listen to stupid gaming streams in their free time? He was pretty much writing off the whole thing as vain hope by the time he'd gotten paired up with Shinso, and was pretty much ready to ignore it like he had never even seen it and figured it out. Then Shinso had made that nepotism comment. Denki wasn't a hundred percent sure what nepotism was, but he was pretty certain it was similar to favoritism and meant that Shinso and Aizawa were related somehow. Even if they weren't, there was bound to be some kind of contact connection between the two that meant that if Shinso somehow followed the stream, then it was only a matter of time until Aizawa figured it out. That meant that all Denki really needed to do was point Shinso in the right direction, and he could wash his hands of the entire situation. So, uh, do you have any hobbies? Denki started. Like video games? You play or anything? Shinso shrugged. I wouldn't describe myself as a hardcore gamer or anything, but I play. You? Yeah. Denki latched on the open like a fire line. I, uh, listen to gaming streams and stuff when I study. I actually know one that you'd probably really like, um, if you want. I don't know. Shinzo hummed. Uncomfortably. I don't have a lot of spare time right now. One of the streamers has, like, this really deadpan sense of humor, kind of like you. Thank you, pushed. They're just, like, this streaming duo, y you know, and they're pretty new on the scene, but... They go by Dusty and Icy Cat, if you want to look them up. I could send you links, too. Just, I really think you should check them out. Shinso looked at him suspiciously. Okay. Denki exhaled in relief and hurried ahead to where the medbots were waiting. He was so glad that was over. That had been awkward as hell. Todoroki has fully gone into the whole gamer terms and terminology and stuff like that because like before when he started and I started seeing that he started doing that it was small and gradual and it was like huh what was this called again oh yeah that Shigaraki mentioned it as that oh and this too right now nah, he's fully pulling them out like yeah here 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 look at this he's a full nerd now there's no going back 
Soon enough, he's gonna start buying D&D dice. He's gonna start playing D&D. And then he's gonna upgrade and evolve into a D&D master. Like, the dungeon master, right? Like, the people that uh, run... That's what they're called, right? DMs? Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, soon enough, that's gonna happen. And, and he's gonna be... He's already too... It's, he's beyond saving. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. But I, I do love that. Now on to, like, the trauma boys, as I'm talking about them. Trauma boys. Love them. Never thought I would love that, like, whole friendship, found family thing they have, but I, I, I love it. Um, I thought it was just gonna be a, sh uh, Shinso, not Shinso. Why did I mention Shinso? Shoto, oh, it's, it's, it's the S's. Shoto helping out Tomura, right? I thought it was just gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, Shoto helping Tomura realize, you know, with the help of the stream and chatters, realize that, hey, you know, get away from your groomer, because that's what All For One is. A groomer. You can't tell me otherwise. He's a groomer. Point and blank. He is a textbook groomer. Okay, maybe not textbook groomer, but he is a groomer. He is a groomer through and through, and you cannot prove me otherwise. And I thought it was just gonna be a one-way street of helping, but no, Tomura is, like, has helped Shoto as well, right? One is teamwork. Shoto is doing teamwork, right? Like, in the My Hero Academia main, that obviously doesn't happen, right? So I really enjoy seeing that, you know, it's not just a one-way street, it's a two-way street. They're both helping each other grow, right? Not only are they trauma bonding and they're kind of like a found family thing, but they're also helping each other grow, which, honestly... That is wonderful when you have a connection like that, when you have a relationship like that. Relationship in the sense of neutral and not just romantic, right? Like, relationship as in, like, your mom, you, uh, you, your siblings, you, and a friend you have, you, and a significant other or potential romantic person you have, right? Whatever it is, the, the simple connection, right? When it's not just a one-sided, like, I help you or they help me but I don't help them, when it's a two-sided, I help you, you help me, we're helping each other. I'm helping you because I want to help you, and you're helping me because you want to help me. And sometimes it's like, I'm unintentionally or um, unintentionally helping. In this case, it's unintentional. They're not intentionally trying to help each other, but at the same time, like, it, it, it just happened, right? It's a really nice bond, and it really it grows you as a person. Can we talk about Chigaraki saying poggers. I'm sorry. I That threw me for a loop. M Man's just said poggers. That awakened me and I was like, I, I got a trigger. I'm like, oh, 2020. Reminds me of me in 2020 and then 2021 and then a bit of 2022. Literally, it's been a year since I got off of that train. Oh my God. <laughs> I think that's when the SMP died that like I kind of just fell off of that group. The only connections I had after that, yeah, no, there was no connections. It's literally just Rambu, but hey, it's Rambu. He's not even a Minecraft streamer anymore. He's a variety streamer. I love him. I haven't seen his streams that much. I've been really busy. Literally the only content creator I've been like actively listening to and watching their content and stuff like that is, is Kat. You know, uh, what, what's it called? Uh, bring it up. Podfix? No, um, Hand, put your hands up, Podfix? I think. I don't know. It's, it's present mic related. I keep forgetting. I'm so used to just Cat Hurricane uh, 998, I think it was. Was it 998? I don't know. I don't remember the numbers, but it was like three numbers. Um, and I, I could have sworn it was 998. Whatever. I'm, I'm used to that, which is why I'm, I'm still getting used to like the new one. Because that was new. That was what? That was implemented a month ago, I think? I don't know. I feel like it's new. I haven't been paying attention. I always just refer to them as Cat. But, yeah. I God, I need to watch more stuff. But the whole Poggers thing threw me for a loop. I I, I crackled. I, I actually bursted out laughing. I had to take like a couple minutes to finally calm down from my fit of laughter because no way he just mentioned Poggers. With that simple Poggers, I know exactly where the fuck they're streaming. <laughs> like, I knew. I knew. Flashbacks. Ugh. I used to stream there. I used to. That's where I used to do my content creation. When I mentioned I used to do lives in one of my lives, that's what I meant. But yeah, it was very interesting. Also, can we talk about Danky? Danky, you're passing up your blame. He's like, I'm washing my hands. Shinso, take the wheel. That bang you hear was me accidentally, not accidentally, I purposely threw my notepad. 
not my notepad, my sticky notes. I have sticky notes that I write all my notes in while I'm recording so I don't forget notes that I want to talk about. Um, unless I forget to write them down, which is a completely different issue that I need to deal with in another time. But um, I, I threw it and then it hit, casually hit the, the, the stop recording button. There's a button that I have that's toggled to be that button and I, I threw it and it hit just that button and then it just stopped the recording and I found it hilarious. I had to die of a bit. I didn't die of a bit of laughter, but like I started laughing because I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> it's what, it's what Dinky did. He just went, boom, not my problem. And then it stopped recording. All right, I'm free. Wash my hands. I'm good to go, which I'm actually interested on that. How that's going to develop is that we're going to find out how are the heroes going to react? How's that going to go? You know, kind of thing. I've been rambling for a while now. I'll let you guys go free now, my raindrops. As always, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Join our community Discord server. Link is in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And thank you so much for watching.